So glad to have all of you here today for our NSF Career Workshop. I'm Beth Hodges. I'm the Director of the Office of Research Development here at Florida State, and I'm so glad you could join us today. The Career Award is just as it says. It's aimed at helping you establish your career. Uh, it's designed to help you be a leader in research education and research and education and should also help to advance the mission of your department. Um, integration of education and research will be very important in this more than it is with a standard research proposal to NSF. That said, your science is important as well. Um, as they look at your intellectual merit and broader impacts, um, these elements will be crucial. So uh, as, as stated on the slide you see, it is foundation wide. And as I mentioned, it has to do with research and education, as well as how, um, how this can advance the mission of your department or organization, um, probably more than other research proposals um, to, into NSF. Um, activities pursued by early career faculty should build a firm foundation for a lifetime. And that's important uh, when you're writing this. Um, and it should help with your leadership of integrating your education and your research. It is five years of funding, which most of you probably know. And it is a single PI project, although you can have some, some collaborators, this is a single PI project. So let's talk about eligibility. Um, I know we have some people here who are, most are tenure track and a couple of you are non-tenure track. So we're gonna hit both of those areas. Um, for tenure track, you need to have your doctorate in a field supported by NSF and be doing work um, that would be supported by NSF, which is pretty straightforward. You need to be untenured at the time of submission. That's different from what it used to be. It used to be that I think it was something like untenured by October. So, you know, some people wouldn't apply even though they were untenured. That's not the case now. So um, as long as you are untenured by the time you submit the proposal, you are good to go. Um, you couldn't previously have a career award, uh, which I don't think you would apply if you already had one anyway. And you can, uh, you could not have applied more than twice. Um, you get three shots at career. Some people get it the first time and that's great. Some people get it the second or third time and that's great too, because, um, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't really matter when you get it. It's just great when you do get it. Um, so you need to uh, not have those. And then lastly, have both research and educational responsibilities at your institution. And any uh, tenure track has that. So that's not a problem. Let's look then at non-tenure track. This is a little fuzzier. So um, this is what they say. Um, any non-tenure track faculty is potentially eligible. Um, you must have a continuing appointment though that's expected to leave, uh, last five years. So you have to have some type of guarantee that you will have this job uh, the whole time of the award. Um, your appointment as it is must have substantial research and educational goals um, and an early career equivalent to pre-tenure. Your departmental letter is going to be really important in establishing your eligibility. Um, and they take that departmental letter uh, very seriously either way, if you're tenure track or non-tenure track, it, it does hold a lot of sway in the proposal uh, being uh, awarded or not. So proposal limits, let's look at that next. Um, as we mentioned you can only submit three times. You can only submit one annually. This is a once a year program. So that's pretty easy to do. Budget limits though. So with career, there are budget minimums. Uh, there's a minimum of 400,000 for the five years with the exception of bio and engineering, which is a minimum of 500,000 for the five years. But you really need to check with your program officer and also um, you need to, and I would strongly advise that you go to the Career Awards database and look to see how much they have generally been funding in your directorate. 
for career. Um, if you're not familiar or um, want some tips on how to use the database, I'm happy to, to talk with you through that if you like. But it, it's very easy to do. Um, I usually put career colon in the, in the search and it'll bring up um, active career awards or whatever you set your parameters to. But look through those. But um, also before preparing your budget, you're strongly encouraged to contact your disciplinary program officer um, to discuss your planned request. So have that discussion. What program is the best fit? Um, again, this is something um, that you should really talk to the program directors about to discuss your ideas and seek more information. Um, there are interdisciplinary proposals where sometimes they share between two, but start with a program director um, that you feel is most appropriate. And um, that, that entails putting together an email with maybe a paragraph or two about what you want to do and um, see if they think what your plan is for your research is appropriate for their directorate. Um, get that squared away early. Um, so you know you know which direction it is headed. Deadlines. So July 25th is the deadline this year. But keep in mind, sponsored research has a, a, a different deadline. And that's always three working days prior. So um, that pushes your deadline to Wednesday, July 20th at 9 a.m. That'll be SRA's deadline for you. Um, I see that Dale is here. Um, I know that all of the folks working in SRA, you know, usually we have quite a few um, career war, career proposals coming through um, right at the end. And so, number one, let your uh, your person at, at sponsored research know you plan to apply as soon as you know you're going to. But also make sure you stick to that deadline because they will have a lot of of proposals and documents to go through and. Um, we don't want to do anything that is going to make it where they are struggling to get to review everything because it only hurts you in the end. So please, July 20th, mark your calendar for that date. OK, um, now I just wanted to uh, do a, a quick uh, overview of the proposal. Um, we're going to go through different parts of it um, and hit specifically on parts that maybe are more different for career than they would be for other NSF programs. So looking at the proposal structure the cover sheet, um, the project title, the project must begin with career colon and the name of the rest of, of what your title is. Um, make sure you put career colon, that's very important. So the project uh, section should contain a well-argued and specific proposal for the activities that will, over a five-year period, build a firm foundation for a lifetime of contributions to research and education in the context of, of your organization. Uh, the proposed project should aim to advance your career goals and your uh, responsibilities, as well as the mission of your department. Um, biographical sketch. Remember, there's no co-PIs on this. Um, current and pending letters, as with the bio sketch, you must use NSF formats. Um, current and pending letters of collaboration as well. Uh, yes, they both have to use uh, NSF formats. Proposals that are non-compliant with career solicitations uh, for the following reasons will be turned without review. If you have a co-PI listed on your cover page or your department, your departmental letter is missing, you, your proposal will be returned without review. So just keep that in mind. The project summary. If you've written for NSF, this is pretty straightforward, just like any other NSF project summary. It's a one page limit. You have to have an overview, um, intellectual merit section, um, which is the contribution you'll make to science, and then the broader impacts, which is the contribution you'll make to society. Um, it needs to have a full overview of the entire project written in layman's terms. And keep in mind, this is the first impression that a reviewer is going to gather of your proposal. So make sure you spend a lot of time uh, crafting this uh, so that it is, it is understandable, clear, cogent, 
um, something that could be read by people that don't know your science, um, but strong. So um, keep in mind that that's important. Some people write their project summary when the whole project is uh, proposal is written. Some people try to write it in the beginning. Um, I think if I were doing it, it would be a little bit of both that it gets tweaked as you go. But um, so that's the project summary. Project description, just like most NSF proposals, it has a 15 page limit. Um, description, the proposed project, including your supporting data, objectives, methods, procedures, and expected significance of the results are all included in this. This is the meat, this is your proposal, right? Um, the items in red, uh, the description of how the research and educational activities are integrated or synergistic and the description of broader impacts besides the educational activities, exceptionally important on a career program because they wanna see how your research and education is tied together. So some key questions. Um, this, is, this is true for any proposal, right? The reviewers need to understand clearly what is it you're doing um, specifically for career what are your long-term career goals and how will your career funding enable them? And that doesn't have to be long, but it's gotta be in there. Um, and then why is the project important? And what are the specific research and educational goals of your project? Um, remember bold and underlined can be your friends. You don't wanna go crazy with them, but uh, if there's something important, uh, just like in your research plan, I will say this again. Um, underline or make clear the things that, that they need to remember. Let's look at the research plan. So what you need is what is what's your specific research hypothesis? What specific tasks and activities are planned? Really important, how are you gonna evaluate the success of these? Um, and what is the expected significance of your results? Like, what will this do? What will this do for your field? How will the work conducted uh, influence other work to be done in the future? Um, how is it innovative or creative? And what is the timeline? So with timeline, I'm a big fan of Gantt charts or some type of chart that will visually display your timeline so they can quickly grasp what you wanna do, what that looks like. Also remember um, how to explain how you will handle, handle things if something doesn't go as planned, you know, you may have three, three different specific tasks or activities. And if one doesn't go, you know, you can't have everything else relying on that, but you do need to explain how, what do you do? Um, maybe that's good. Maybe that helps knock something out, but make sure you are very clear about that. Of course, we're going to talk about this more with our presenters a little later, but, um, I'll just go into it a little. So proposals must have an integrated research and education plan at their core. Um, if you read the proposal, and if, actually, if you read the letter that is given to reviewers, they are actually told, you know, there's no single approach. Um, but they encourage applicants to think creatively about how the research will impact their educational goals and how their educational activities feed back into their research. Um, the education component of a proposal really can be a broad range of areas and can be directed at any level, K through 12, undergrads, grad students, or even the general public, but it should be related to your research and consistent with your goals. Um, there are some examples uh, of successful in our successful proposals database that I'll talk about a little later. And I also have included some on the next slide as well. Um, educational activities can also include designing new or adapting and implementing uh, educational materials and practices. Um, such activities can be consistent with research and best practices and curriculum and pedagogy and evaluation. Um, proposers may build on or otherwise meaningfully participate in existing NSF supported activities that are already going on on our campus. For example, the Mag Lab has activities going on and it could be you partner with them. And there are other NSF activities around campus. So um, that is an option to consider. 
and our, our presenters that have come up after this will talk more on the point of this integration as it can be a tricky part of the proposal for many people. So I listed here uh, just some uh, examples of education activities. So there's just some examples. And as I mentioned, um, we have a successful proposal database and I'll probably bring it up many times, but we have a number of successful career proposals in this database. And I'm not saying look at it to steal ideas, but it could kind of help you think about, oh, they did that, maybe I could do something similar or, you know, it, it could just help, help you uh, think through something that might be helpful. So budget and budget justification. Work with your department, college, financial management staff. Um, so most of you have departmental reps that are available to you and they can help you with your budget and your budget justification. Um, just remember if an activity is in the proposal, it needs to be in the budget. Or if it's uh, not in the budget, explain why it's not. Because sometimes you don't need uh, funds to do something. Uh, so make sure you, you uh, spell that out. And also make sure when you're considering your budget, ask for just what you need. You don't wanna low ball. You don't wanna go low because it may make reviewers question if you really have the resources to, to be successful. And if you have too much, it may, show inexperience or maybe uh, not understanding what uh, it really takes. So try to be as accurate as possible. And, and that's just not with career, that's with any proposal. Um, make sure you're getting your budget as, as tight as you possibly can. Again, uh, co-PIs are not allowed. Uh, request for support for other senior personnel consultants or sub-awards is allowed in a limited role. And international activities are encouraged and may be supported. I've never seen a, a career proposal go in with international activities, um, but you can. And they do say that they are encouraged. So um, that's a consideration. Current and pending support and facility statements. These are other documents that have to go in. Current and pending, you have to use the NSF required format. And remember to include both external and internal FSU awards, as well as this particular proposal uh, in it. And then the facility statement, um, that is a way that the reviewers can see that you have the resources available to be successful here. And sometimes it could be you know, somewhere else, but you have some type of commitment that you have access to certain resources. So you wanna describe that. Um, and there's an outline available in our toolkit. Um, so take a look at that if that is helpful to you. Departmental letter, I think I mentioned this before, um, very important. Actually, I'm gonna read to you what it says um, in the letter to reviewers. It says for them, I need to move this over so I can see it a little. In the instructions to reviewers, this is stated, in your review of career proposals, we also ask that you consider the departmental letter found in the supplementary, supplementary documents section. The letter should demonstrate an understanding of and commitment to the effective integration of research and education as a primary objective of the career board. The letter should also acknowledge how the institution will commit to the professional development and mentoring of the PI. The departmental letter must affirm that the investigator's appointment is in an early career equivalent to pre-tenure status and the departmental letter must clearly and convincingly demonstrate how the faculty member's appointment satisfies requirements. And uh, again, if you don't remember the letter, it will be turned without review. So this letter, a lot of your, um, your department chairs have done these before, so they know what they look like, they know what they need. Um, if they haven't, and um, you need any assistance in putting together this letter, let me know and we'll do everything we can to help. So uh, letters of collaboration must follow a very specific format. You've probably seen this if you have applied for NSF funding before, but it is one sentence and I have actually typed it in right here. It's very straightforward. If the, if the proposal submitted by Dr. Blank, entitled blank, 
is selected for funding. It's my intent to collaborate is basically all it says. That, that's all you get. So it's it's not a detailed thing, but you, they are not going to like if you submit more than this. Uh, data management plan, they're always required. Um, and data management plans seem to get more and more um, visibility. I'm reading more and more about how important it is for sharing your information. Um, we have resources available on the NSF Career Toolkit, and the libraries are great at helping people write their data management plans. If you don't know your contact at the library um, to, to help you with that, just let me know and we'll get you connected. Um, postdoc mentoring plan is required if you're going to have a postdoc. Usually with careers, you do not have a postdoc because there's just not the funds for it. It's not saying you can't, but it's it's not very common. And then lastly, the other required documents, collaborators and other affiliations, and your biographical sketch. Um, make sure you're following the latest NSF proposal and award policies and procedures guide, which we call the PAPG. Um, there's a new one, goodness, it seems like every year. So if you have bookmarked an old one, be careful. Um, make sure you're using the most recent one and, and understand what they're telling you in that. You've got the PAPG to follow and you've got the, the proposal uh, RFP to follow, right? So you need to take the time to read them both very clearly and have a good understanding and always ask questions. Ask questions to me, ask questions to sponsored research, ask questions to your program officer if you have questions along the way. So my final comments, if I could, if I could encourage you to do one thing, please start early. Um, you know, we're holding this in March and, and yes, this proposal is due in July um, because you, you need time. You need time to, to get things together. You need time to figure out with your program officer what area you need to go to. You've got to figure out your broader impacts and your education plan and who you might be partnering with. Um, you need to research the solicitation to make sure you clearly understand it. Um, and finally, if you get it done early, which I'm really hoping you do, um, you'll plan to go through a peer review meeting with ORD. We set these up uh, for anybody that wants them, uh, it will be a panel of three senior faculty. Um, at least two of them understand career well, and the third one, a lot of times, is uh, somebody in your field uh, that understands your science. Um, these are one hour sessions, but you need to have your proposal draft done early to make this happen. Um, just so you know, this year, we're going to have a record uh, of career awards, which is awesome. Um, we'll have at least six right now that we can tell. We still have four outstanding of the six. Uh, five of those people did the reviews. And um, the feedback has been very positive in that um, it allows faculty to catch things or maybe clarify things that maybe, you know, is the difference of them getting funded or having to go another year. So. Um, I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but it definitely helps. So with that, I'm going to stop talking and see if anybody has any questions. I'm just going to read through these real quickly, and then if I've missed something, let me know. If we're starting in August 22, would this be applied for the following summer? Okay, that's a really good question. Um, Usually people wait until maybe their second year to apply. Sometimes their third. You've get you got three shots, so you don't want to wait too late. But you it also helps to have some preliminary data. So um, sometimes starting as soon as you get here, you may not have what you need, if that makes sense. Um, so you I would say, yes, you could apply in the summer of 23, but you may want to make, wait till 24. Um, I would talk to faculty in your area who have applied for this or have gotten it in the past. Um, or, you know, we can talk through this more if you like. Um, can we have a co-PI in the career proposal? No. Can we underline in the proposal? Absolutely. Are we not limited by a latex format? 
I'm not sure about latex. Um, latex is not my favorite because we edit a lot of proposals for faculty. It's very hard for us to edit in with a latex format, but um, I'm not sure if you can. The deadline for peer review, I will be sending out. I haven't set those. Usually um, it's about a month before the deadline. Um, we need to give the reviewer a couple weeks, the internal reviewers a couple weeks to look at it. And then we need the review and we need to give you a couple weeks to make any edits. So four to five weeks, maybe six, um, we'll have to see, but that will be the peer review. And it still can be somewhat in draft, but done for the most part. Let's see, is there any way to have a successful career proposal outside of FSU so I can find more in my field? I really wish that were the case. Um, uh, the faculty who have given us successful proposals are all from FSU, and that means that there may not be any in your area. Um, at the same time, we don't have every NSF career proposal, and sometimes faculty don't mind sending it directly to another PI, but doesn't want it posted on a, on a website, even though it's locked for FSU. So um, if you want to contact me, um, we can find out if there's anybody that is here that we can get them from, um, maybe to you directly. So um, just let me know. I'll send everybody um, information on the toolkit and our deadlines. Um, I'm going to keep up with all of you through this, whoever tells me they're going to apply this year, um, uh, and we'll provide information to all of you as we learn and as we go along so that you are, are as prepared as you can be when you go to apply. Thank you.